All right, first question. Uh, what ways do you guys think that the program can improve? Personally, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the, this one. It's communication throughout campus. Um, a lot of times you'll find out in, in talking to people on campus and, and, and talking to the assistant deans and in interviews that a lot of times there's not that open communication between departments. Um, I think Ms. Ms. Price said that she tries to make sure that there's an open door between financial aid and housing and all these different factors. Um, and it, it doesn't always seem to be there. And I think that for students, um, I think that being able to have that would, would really help if even, and for me, the end of the Eagle Shuffle or the Aggie Shuffle, whatever you want to call it, where I don't even want to answer the question, I just send you somewhere else. And, and you still have that sometimes around. Okay. I definitely agree with that. And to um, add to what you just said, I feel as if, um, there could also be some form of marketing. Uh, it is the, you know, students, I feel like students don't really get to um, take advantage of certain programs because they don't know that they exist. So I feel like there could be improvement within marketing or advertising and like Mr. Edwards said, communication across campus and just putting the information out there and getting it to the students. Okay. Uh, Mr. Edmund? Uh, well, I guess I can, I can caveat. Uh, based on the research, based on the interviews and findings from uh, everything we discussed, not only do I piggyback and caveat what you said, um, I would say we, I mean, we can obviously discuss the uh, approach and the greatest improvement would ha would be having uh, a program and an approach where every student can be impacted equally um, towards their success as a student, towards their evolution um, and improvement in all areas, rather than just treating the uh, uh, international student the same you would treat the athlete you know, or different students with different learning deficiencies or, or dis uh, disabilities, really focusing on how each student can be impacted individually. Obviously, we know that that would be difficult to have one counselor, you know, one mentor for every student. However, that, uh, I guess, lends to a funding issue. So obviously funding would need to increase for these programs so we can improve not only the programs, but improve the uh, student experience, retention and graduation rates. I can agree. I, I agree. <laughs> so I guess I'll, answer, I'll ask the next question. Okay. How does um, student support services impact the student experience? Yeah, you want to go first on this one as well? Yeah, I, I don't mind. I think that it touches everything in a student's life, um, which is kind of hard to believe, but it, it does. Um, everybody, in my eyes, when people get to campus, they think of the academic part, but they forget about all that student service touch. Um, like I said, from financial aid, from the Men's Achievement Center, to, from um, over at the Women's Center, the LBGTQ, all those things are impacting our students. Housing, um, I mean, where you're gonna live, how you're gonna interact with your RAs, those things all impact um, what goes on in their life. Um, and being one of, being in, in the field a little, um, I realized that a lot of times we see the student and talk to them about more than anybody else on campus. And I think that they come to the student support person 
be it over at the Male Achievement Center, just to vent, just to tell them what's going on. Um, my roommate is doing this, or I'm not doing this. I'm not eating well. I'm not. I don't have money. Those things are coming out, and it's through student support, and that's how they're impacting our students more than we ever really know. Agree. Um, I guess okay to, to to follow up with that. Uh, and the question again was, how does uh, student support services impact the student experience? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we all understand that the classroom academic experience is one of the most important things, but it's not the only aspect of, of the student experience. Um, in trying to impact the total development of the students, um, their entire experience on campus, outside the classroom, inside the classroom, in the dorms, um, just their evolution in general, Student support services is vital in that development and in that growth. Um, as, as, as Ed said, uh, just that mentorship or that that peer to peer interaction, just being able to vent um, is equally as important um, as that academic you know, experience, as I stated. Um, to have that support, to have that backing, to have that understanding. And again, in our research, we discovered that, you know, you can go there because you're having difficulties understanding the, uh, the material because you come from a different country. You have financial hardships. You've transferred. I myself have been a transfer student and I didn't utilize those services and I did feel lost. So now understanding more about the program, um, I can see that student support services as a whole in that umbrella impacts the entire student experience and allows them from freshman year to senior year graduation to evolve as people, as students, um, and just be more understanding of their cohorts and different demographics. Um, yeah, I can also answer, answer that question. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, going off of what, what you said, as um, a first year uh, you know, first generation, low income college student myself, I feel like student support services really helped me as a student because when I got to college, I didn't know anything. My parents couldn't really help me because, you know, they never went to college. So I was really lost. And the very first place that I even turned to was um, University College. My advisor was like my first point um, of contact to even connect me to other resources around campus. So I feel like it really does impact the student experience positively because it impacts it my experience. And I feel like if it wasn't for, you know, student support services, um, I would have been really lost and <laughs> confused because I didn't really understand anything and I didn't have anybody to guide me. And those people, you know, people in university college and campus partners, they were there to kind of help me get through my college experience. So I definitely can say that it impacts the experience in a positive way. Awesome. Okay, I'll ask the next question. Have you experienced or witnessed gaps in the program's reach? Did you want to go first? Okay. Uh, yeah. Yes. Have you experienced or witnessed gaps in the program's reach? Um, I can say as a professional, on the professional side, I definitely have witnessed gaps in the program's reach, such as communication and just um, trying to make sure that students are having a positive experience, especially with COVID going on right now. Students aren't being able to um, reach certain resources and you know it's kind of hard for them because we're going through a pandemic and the students need help to even their experience and so i definitely can see that the online portion kind of has a gap in it because of the fact that um, students aren't being able to reach the resources that they need through this through COVID 19. So that's one experience that I have noticed. Um, 
just the, I guess the caveat uh, on that, obviously it's a, it's a hot button topic. It's a very, very big thing right now in higher ed and all industries um, with a global pandemic and moving towards, you know, online platforms. And I can't recall the, the exact term right now that they call it, but it basically speaks to like social economic um, uh, issues and everybody not having, the, you know, the, the same amount of resources, not having high speed mm-hmm. internet access, and that being a, you know, an issue that we didn't see coming. While we knew that there were disparities between all classes of people, all financial classes of people, we didn't know how big of an impact it would be until, you know, in the pandemic. Um, but again, to to piggyback to what you're saying, I mean, that is a a an issue that has yet to be rectified. There may be some workarounds at this point now that we're a few weeks into the pandemic, um, but that is something that that certainly needs to be improved in a gap that we have all experienced and witnessed uh, going forward. Um, additionally, something that I've experienced personally is financial status uh, and, and background doesn't necessarily determine um, uh, excuse me, how, how can I put it? From my personal experience, as Kiana and I have, have discussed, I was not eligible for the services based on my parents' income. And if, if you were to look at, you know, my trajectory from a freshman in college and an undergrad, um, you would recognize that I needed help. And I didn't have access to that help, or maybe I didn't have the, the right information to get that help. But I feel like myself and plenty of students may fall through the cracks due to um, the eligibility criteria or not having the right marketing for the program to show that there may be things that we're you know, uh, eligible for. So I think that's a gap that needs to be fixed, um, ultimately can be fixed. I understand that there will always be criteria for students to, be, um, to have access to the programs, but for others that are on the cusp that need help, I believe there should be something more for the entire student population. For me, and I, I'm going to piggyback on, on you guys, um, the technological gap that it is out there. I see more students who were in a computer lab on campus who were in the library studying on campus because they had technology there that they're not having at home. Um, I have one young man who's actually going to transfer because family income is is so tight with COVID and he doesn't have technology. He's going to have to take all his classes, pass, fail, because he's he's not going to do well um, because he doesn't have technology at home. Um, We tried to get him one. The university has stepped up and really big to get, um, I think that they're not iPads, they're, they're little netbooks, but um, I don't know if it's in time to save him. So there's gaps in the technology. And while we are still having technology on campus and the students are getting um, fee for it, um, we need to do something big about technology, even if it's going to a laptop university, sort of like where John C. Smith, everybody got a Lenovo laptop when they got on campus, or and it's part of your student fees, and uh, mm-hmm. something like that, because technology is such a big deal now um, mm-hmm. that, and our students don't have access to those services. Um, like I say, students are trying to reach their advisors to get it get in classes for next semester. That's not happening because they don't have it. Uh, Students just need somebody to talk to because their home life is a lot worse than whatever they were doing on campus. Mm -hmm. They had a better situation when they were in rush dorm with all the noise in there than they, it's it's so much better than what's going on at home. So if we can find some way to close that technological gap, it it would be amazing and it will do a lot for retention. Mm -hmm. And to go off of what you said, we're actually in the process of researching grants 
um, laptop grants for first year students to have because of this issue, the technology issue. And um, it's sad that some students have to even transfer or, you know, drop out because of COVID and the situation that it put everyone at. But I can definitely say the technology is really big. But um, hopefully we'll be able to fix that by getting this grant and providing laptops for the first year students, which I think all, I honestly, I think it should be more than just first year students that should be eligible. But I mean, it's a start. Right. Yeah. But when you sit down and you see how many seniors are stuck in, you know, I'm going to have to go to the library from this time to this time to get a paper done. Or I have students who are sitting down saying like, I have to write a paper on my phone. Mm. That's when it starts to, you know, a final paper on your cell phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, moving on to the next question, it, it, it ties in, obviously, if you see the list, it ties into basically what we're talking about uh, with regards to technology. Um, as we make these techno- technological advances and move forward and, and you know, uh, improving the way in which we communicate, host classes. Um, how do you think practitioners or student support services specifically can use these platforms to reach students or maybe uh, interact with the students through something like social media? I think social media is really important for this this age group that we're dealing with. Um, mm-hmm. Nobody uses Facebook anymore except for instructors and parents. Um, Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to be able to get on Instagram and learn how to TikTok and uh, Mm -hmm. learn how to do all these little things so that our students, we can meet our students where they're at. They're never going to come back to where we are. Um, And I can say this easily. I I know Miss (laughs) Miss. I am probably twice the age of both of you. So, <laughs> as an old man who had um, the accounts when they first came available, um, it, it's important to meet a student where they are. So, we have to find out what they're doing, where they are, and and meet them there. And that's where we can advertise. We can go ahead and, and put, you know, this is where you can get tutoring instead of putting mm-hmm. posters up around campus because students are never seeing them and mm-hmm. other things like that. And to piggyback off of that, I think University College does a really good job with social media because uh, we have a, you know, Instagram page. <laughs> <laughs> so they post everything that um, they advertise everything on the Instagram page. And so um, I think that social media is really important for this generation. I'm kind of a part, well, I'm not really a part of this one, but, well, I kind of am. But it's really important because all of my peers are on social media. They're even on Snapchat, Instagram. Some of them are still on Facebook. So it's just important to make sure that, like um, Mr. Edwards said, that we're meeting students where they are because social media is a really big one. And that's how we get the information to students because that's where they spend a big chunk of their time. Agreed. And I, I like that quote though, uh, meeting students where they are. Um, of course, I'm gonna piggyback because those are excellent answers from you both. Um, I think with social media, not to be too invasive of you know the profession, uh, professionals, but I think it also allows for um, a greater amount of office hours, so to speak. Like there may be a portion of virtual office hours where students that are in a crisis mm-hmm. can actually reach out to, you know, the the the, the proper counselors or mentors. Um, so it increases that reach, you know, for peer to peer or student practitioner, you know, uh, interaction. So that to me would be the biggest, the biggest benefit of of having a uh, social media presence. Uh, secondly, I think Kiana, you mentioned it, you know, as far as just marketing the program and just getting the program's name out there, all the initiatives, all the events, um, you know, all the offerings, 
would be presented to the students. And I mean, there may be students that feel like, you know, hey, I don't want to be seen going into the office. I, I, I feel lesser than if I, if I have to ask for help. You know, if someone sees mm-hmm. me reading a flyer or, you know, copying out some information from a flyer, but if it comes directly to my phone and there's a phone number attached, if there's a, you know, direct message I can send, that would probably increase a lot more people's chances of interacting. Um, lastly, and I think not only is it important, I've, I've seen both sides coming from an institution that doesn't use social media or really any type of a, a platform outside of traditional, you know, printed flyers and things of that nature, and now experiencing how Central approaches it, um, it shows that the institution is engaged, that the institution as a whole wants the number one priority being the students to be um, involved at all times, you know, meeting students where they are. So, of course, you use social media, we're going to use social media to speak to you. We'll speak the same language. We'll communicate with the same language so everyone is comfortable um, and everyone is involved. And I think it's very important. And if, if there's institutions that are not using it, they're two steps behind already. That was a great answer. <laughs> I really like that <laughs> answer. <laughs> Take you back off of you both. I appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, so I guess the last question is what did you learn in our research and what stood out the most? I'll go ahead. Um, what I learned was, um, and for some reason, and I, I spoke to four or five professionals and all of them talked about mental health. Mm-hmm. And, That's a big one. And everybody talked about it in some form or fashion and to come up in so, so many different professional conversations, um, I think that mental health is something that we have to look out for the next 20 forever. It's something that mm-hmm. we want to have to do for our students. Um, and for me, um, what's the second part of the question? I just read it. <laughs> oh, so what did you learn? And, um, what stood out the most? What stood out the most was we need to commit to answering the question. Um, uh, and speaking of uh, advising, Ms. Q was right on when she said, like, we're going to try to answer the question and not have the students running from here, there, and the other. Um, when talking to Mr. Um, Moultrie, same thing. Everybody is trying to get it where um, they and they talked about, and and I heard it at A and T first, the eagle, the Aggie shuffle, and I heard it here, the eagle shuffle, where I don't want to deal with it. I can send you here. Instead of doing that, let's just find out what the student owes. Oh, let's go ahead and find out why they can't um, register. Let's go ahead and find out those certain things that we can find out by just simply picking up the phone in our office calling over somebody instead of having a student walk from A, B, and C. Agreed. Yeah. Kiana, do you mind if I go and you and you uh you give our uh last last word our benediction? <laughs> you want me to give the last word and you wanna go? Yes, man, I'll I'll be quick. I'll be quick with mine. Uh what stood out the most and basically what I learned is just the importance of this particular program, this platform, and how much it has impacted um, students. Again, I can't speak from personal experience that, you know, I was a member of this program, but now in hindsight, I look back and and I'm I'm envious of the opportunities that were presented to those that were, you know, involved in student support services. Um, Student support services and that entire umbrella gives all students the opportunity to be better to advance, to be great. Um, you know, we obviously see that there's unfair advantages in every industry and everything that we do. It seems like these services allows all students, regardless of your background, to be seen on the equal platform, to advance, to improve in whatever, you know, whatever ways that they're uh, hoping to improve on. Um, what stood out the most is the not necessarily a lack of support because there's extreme visibility with student support services, but what stood out the most is how much more is needed 
to improve the program, mm -hmm. how much more funding, how much more staffing is needed to continue improving this program and, and get it out to the masses. Now, granted, we can present this entire presentation to the entire student body and Kian and her team can post flyers and get on social media and Ed can do his thing, but there's still going to be a large demographic, large amount of students that don't fully know what's going on. They're not aware and they'll be left out. So what stands out the most is the fact that we need to push this even more to all eligible students. Because I believe that's a, a statistic that we brought up. There's the mm -hmm. large majority of students are eligible. And I, that, I believe Ed, that was in your research and, and you know, your assessment. Most of the students at Central are eligible for the program, but so many of them don't utilize the services. That was the mm -hmm. biggest thing that, you know, that was that was the uh, the the uh, the ah moment, if, if I can steal that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's what stood out to me the most. So, uh, Kiana, the story is yours. You knew I was going to say that. That's why you wanted <laughs> to go before me. <laughs> but uh, definitely the fact that I feel like the programs need to be pushed out more such as you mentioned. Um, I didn't know that many students don't use tutoring. Many students don't use, um, they're not a part of TRIO. Many students, well, they miss their appointments with their academic advisors. <laughs> so, you know, it just, you just have to, well, we just have to um, make sure that we're pushing those things out there, those programs, those opportunities. And I feel like, you know, as a freshman, when I was in school, I didn't know anything about anything. So, and it was because there wasn't any um, advertising or they didn't push it as hard. So if you just didn't know, you didn't know. And I feel like that was the biggest thing for me that stood out that these students have all these opportunities that are right here on campus but they're not utilizing them because they really just don't know, you know, it's not being pushed out there. And so I feel like, you know, that that's important and that's what stood out to me. Awesome. Well, if there's nothing else, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say on record, uh, I appreciate the opportunity. I appreciate, you know, the, the efforts that we all put into the, you know, bringing this presentation to life, um, individual efforts, collective efforts, and, a, and I'm grateful for um, the exposure to the program. Because again, I, I didn't know much, um, but not not to take your, your last word, Kiana, but just to kind of tie everything up, um, you know, I, I believe we did choose a, a very necessary program to discuss um, and something that was extremely enlightening. So, uh, Ed, if, there's, if you got a last word, now would be the time. Or Kiana, last word. If not, we can wrap it up. I'm the child one. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pleasure with working with you both. And hopefully, you know, these um, issues that we mentioned would will eventually be addressed in the near future, hopefully. So we can just wrap this up. All right. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Thank you.